So our focus today is isosceles triangles. Remember that isosceles triangles are triangles that have two sides the same, and then we found out that if they have two sides the same, that they also have two angles the same. Um, if you recall, we have um, each of the congruent legs, um, each of the legs is the, are the congruent sides, then you have your base, then we have our vertex angle, and then we have our two base angles. These two are our base angles, which are attached to the base. So just some vocabulary. So the base angles theorem says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. So what that means is that if this side is congruent to this side, then this angle is congruent to this angle. Okay, so that's just saying if DO is congruent to OG, then angle D is congruent to angle G. That's what the base angle theorem says. So we can use that to solve these problems. So notice first thing, um, anytime I give you information uh, markings, they're important. And so the first thing you notice is since we just talked about congruent sides, what that tells me is since those two sides are congruent, that means that these two angles at X and at Y, or excuse me, at Z, that those two are equal. So if we take 180 and subtract 110, we get 75, or excuse me, 70. 180 minus 110 is 70. I cannot think, it is 70. Now, both of those angles together are 70. I have 70 degrees left, divided by two would be that this angle, or that this angle at BCA is 35 and this angle at BAC or Z is 35. So we know that X is 35 degrees and we know that Z is 35 degrees. Now we have to get into this other triangle on the other side. Um, and so notice also that I have some other markings. I have that these two lines are parallel. And so if those two lines are parallel, if I connect them, the easiest one to see probably is this. It's not the only way to see it. Um, but if I connect those, then what I have is these alternate interior angles. So now Z and W are alternate interior angles. And the theorem says that if lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. That means that W is also 35. And then from there, I can use um, triangle DAC. The angles of a triangle add up to 180. So 35 plus 50. Subtract that from 180 and you find out that angle Y, um, or this angle here at DAC, is 95. So we used a lot of things here, so everything is starting to build. We used our base angles theorem, we used our alternate interior angles, and we used triangles add to 180. You could have also, maybe you didn't see that alternate interior angles. Maybe you automatically saw this same side interior angles. You could have done the same thing, 50 plus 35, subtracted that from 180 and got that 95. So you could have done that first. So in two, I've told you that the sides are congruent, but I told you in a different way. I told you by actually giving the measurements. Well, if those two sides are congruent, then these two base angles are congruent. This is a part equals part situation. So four U minus seven is equal to two U plus 15. So we need to solve that equation, subtract two U from both sides, add seven to both sides. You get two U is equal to 22. Divide both sides by 2, and you get that u is 11. If I asked for the angles, then you would want to go back in, plug in 11, and um, substitute that in and find out how big those angles are. So part equals part. You're going to have that a lot. Everything is either part plus part equals whole or part equals part. So three is a little tricky because it does it tells you information without telling you information. So when you look at three, there's got to be a reason for that circle to be there. Well, the reason that the circle is there is if you notice this line right there that goes from the center to the side and that line right there that goes from the center to the side, those are radii of the circle. Well, it doesn't matter where I draw the radius of the circle. It is going to be the same from the center to the side is going to be the same length. And so at this point, you might want to flip your paper around because what that tells me is that these two angles are congruent to each other. 
So if one base angle is 42, then the other base angle is 42. And I am asking for the vertex angle. So if you double 42 and subtract that from 180, you get that angle X is 96. So again, the reason that circle is there is because you needed to know about the radius. The radius is the same all the way around the circle regardless of where I draw it. And then it's the angles that are opposite those sides are the same side. And then triangles add up to 180, so X is 96. Now in four, I only have two angles marked. There has to be something else, so more information that I need. Um, because I have a vertex angle and a base angle. There's no relationship with a vertex angle and a base angle in an isosceles triangle. But what I do know is that since those two sides are the same, that means that this angle and this angle have to be congruent to each other. So that means I need to mark it because at this point, I, I, can't, I don't have anything that I can set equal to each other. Now, notice this though. It is 2x equals to 2x, but that doesn't do me any good. Right? Those two base angles are congruent, but that doesn't help me. But I need to go, now I have all three angles, and I know that all three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So that would be 2x plus 2x plus 2x minus 24 is equal to 180. So now we're down to the algebra. We'll solve it. 6x minus 24 is equal to 180. Add 24 to both sides and divide by six, and you get that x is equal to 34. And then I could, if I had asked for it, I could have gone back in, substituted in that x, and found out how big each of those angles are. Okay, so a lot of things that you have to remember and think about. Notice those markings, pay attention to them. So at this point, you have um, that one angle is 6x plus 18. You have that middle angle is 4x. So that's the information that we have. Well, if we base it off of, if we go off of this triangle, if <clears throat> these two sides are the same, so if this side is congruent to this side, then that means that this angle is congruent to this angle. So that means I need another piece. I don't have anything to set equal to each other. I don't have anything to add up yet. So it's 6x plus 18. Well, I do have now something that I can set equal to each other, but it doesn't do me any good. 6x plus 18 equals 6x plus 18 is not helpful. Everything cancels out. So that 4x is there for a reason. Notice that it is vertical. These two angles are vertical. So this vertex angle on the other side is 4x. So now I have two base angles and one vertex angle, and I know that the sum of the angles of a triangle on the interior add up to 180. So if I take 6x and 4x and 6x, I'm going to go ahead and add those together. That gives me 16x, and 18 and 18 is 36. If that bothers you, don't shortcut that. Then write 6x plus 18 plus 4x plus 6x plus 18 equals 180. I was just combining my like terms all in one step to save me a little bit of work. Subtract 36 from both sides. You get 144. So 16x is equal to 144. Divide both sides by 16 and you get that x is 9. And again, you could substitute that in if I asked for it, and you could find out how big each of the angles is. So the base angles theorem says that if you have two sides of the triangle that are congruent, then the base angles are congruent. Okay, the converse says that if the base angles are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. And again, the two congruent angles are those base angles. So if we know if angle D is congruent to angle G, then what that tells me is that OD is congruent to OG. Side OD is congruent. So if D is congruent to G, then DO is congruent to OG. So it's just the converse, if P then Q, if Q then P. So where that shows up is when we're dealing with the sides. So notice I have these two angles that are marked that they're congruent. If those two angles, those are base angles, if there are two of them the same, then that means that these two sides are the same. So those two sides are equal. So now this is an algebra problem. 9x minus 24 
is equal to 4x plus 36. Subtract 4x from both sides and you get 5x. Add 24 to both sides and you get 60. Divide both sides by 5 and you get that x is 12. So in number 7, I'm asking for the perimeter. In order to find the perimeter, I need to find the lengths of the sides. In order to find the lengths of the sides, I need to either know what they add up to be or I need to know that they're equal to each other. Well, I haven't told you anywhere what the sides add up to be. By the way, they never add up to 180. We won't ever do that. Um, but what I do know, I have that these are marked. If those two angles are congruent, that means these two sides are congruent. So for right now, that 3x minus 8 is just extra information that I don't need yet. So 2x minus 1 is equal to x plus 4. When you solve this equation, subtract x from both sides, add 1 to both sides, and you get that x is 5. Now, I have actually asked for the perimeter. If you stopped there, you'd only get partial credit. I asked for the perimeter. So 2 times 5 minus 1 is 9. 5 plus 4 is 9. Those are supposed to be the same, remember. And then 3 times 5 minus 8 is 7. So the perimeter would be 9 plus 9 plus 7, which is 25. And that would be 25 feet. So again, notice when you have markings, when things are marked congruent, they are marked that way for a reason. Now, when you get to these word problems, I highly recommend that you draw a picture. As soon as you read it, if, if you read a shape, triangle, then draw one, and it is a, an isosceles triangle in particular. So let's draw an isosceles triangle and label it. So this is what it means to be isosceles. It says if the base angles of the isosceles triangles measure 3x plus 8 and 12x minus 28, what is the value of x and the measure of the vertex angle? So my base angles are these two angles right here. One of them is 3x plus 8. One of them is 12x minus 28. And we know, um, according to the base angle theorem, that if the sides are the same, then the base angles are the same. That means those two angles are equal, part equals part. So 12x minus 28 is equal to 3x plus 8. Now it's an algebra problem. Subtract 3x from both sides and get 9x. Add 28 to both sides and get 36. And you get that x is 4. That answers part of the problem. I also asked for the measure of the vertex angle. To find the measure of the vertex angle, I need to know how big the base angle is. So 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 8 is 20. So that means that this angle is 20. And this angle is 20. Well, the angles of a triangle add up to 180. So if you take 180 and subtract 40, you would find out that the vertex angle is equal to 140 degrees. Okay? Always draw a picture. It makes it so much easier. You get all those words, but if you'll draw a picture, it'll make it much nicer. Okay, if triangle ABC is isosceles, again, we have an isosceles triangle, so I'm going to draw one. Um, vertex angle A, that means A is up here, and it is 2x plus 40. Remember, the vertex is in between the two sides that are congruent. Base angle, angle B. I have more space over here, so I'm going to put it over here. It could go either direction. 5x plus 16. What is the measure? What is x and what is the measure of b? Okay, don't forget when you have two sides are congruent, both your base angles are congruent. Now, my vertex angle and my base angle are not equal to each other. So that means I need to I, I need another piece. Since I don't have two that are congruent, I must have part plus part. Well, don't forget that C then also is 5x plus 16 because it's another base angle. So I have all three angles. The interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. And so 5x plus 16 plus 5x plus 16 plus 2x plus 40 is 180. Or 5x, 5x, and 2x is 12x. And 16 and 16 and 40 is 72. So I combined all my like terms for my angles. I'm setting that equal to 180. 180 minus 72 
is 108. So you get 12x is equal to 108, which means that x is 9. If x is 9, um, it asks then what is x, and then it asks for the measure of angle B. So that would be 5 times 9 plus 16, or 45 plus 16 which is 61, so angle B is 61. So is angle C, and then we could also find out what angle A is if you had been asked for it. And the last one, the ratio of the measure of the base angle to the measure of the vertex angle is three to 16. So if you go back and think about what we did when we had that extended ratio earlier in our note packet, if I draw the picture, here's what it looks like. <clears throat> Remember that this is your base angle. I'll label it with a B. And your vertex angle is your angle that's up there in between the two sides that are congruent. So the ratio from the base angle to the vertex angle. So this is base, this is vertex. Okay, base angle to vertex angle. And then, so it's in the same order. So my base angle is three or three X because to be in ratio means it has the same multiplier your vertex angle is going to be 16x. Now I know that those two are not congruent to each other because this is isosceles and only my base angles are congruent to each other. So that means I can't set those equal to each other. I need to add them, but I can't add two angles. I need to add three. So that's where I need to know that this other base angle is also 3x. Now the angles of a triangle add up to 180, 16x plus 3x plus 3x is 22x, and 22x is equal to 180. And 180 divided by 22 is 8.2, and it says to the nearest tenth. So we're going to go, it's 8.1818, right? 8.1818, and so on. It continues. So if I round to the nearest tenth, then that would be 8.2. So if I plug that in, then three times that number. So if I take um, eight, the original number on my calculator and I multiply that by three, that tells me that each of my base angles are 24.5. And if both of my base angles are 24.5, then I take two of those and subtract it from 180, and then I find out that my vertex angle is 131. Okay, so when you have words, always, if I talk about a shape in the, the problem, then draw that shape and then start labeling it. It helps you to keep it straight. There are a lot of things to remember. Um, the base angle theorem says that if two sides are the same, then the angles are the same. And the converse of that says if two angles are the same, then the sides are the same. Don't forget your alternate interior, your linear pairs, your vertical angles, and that the sum of the interior angles of the triangle add to 180.